difficult. Go and check it out. You are you will hardly see a home taking three square meters any longer in Nigeria. And the, this thing continues to get worse. And we are just surviving. We are not living. So it continues to get worse. For me, if you strictly divide our habit into two. Um, for your political reason, where you share one bag of fertilizer, two bags. But for industrialization and food sustainability, we need all local government. Minimum, in fact, local government and share boundaries to join together. Clear 20,000 of hectares of land. Fund mechanization company. 20 years, 10 years loan. And allow individuals to come and invest True, but you have to practicalize this. We have federal investors that has about 10,000 hectares, 11,000. They are using it for nothing. And majority of farmland, go and check it, farmlands are not even being turned to real estate. Then, most time, I wonder, will there be a time we will have an arable land to even farm at all? Hey, Look at the number of hectares we are farming, and we are getting it to you. The problem is plenty. My friend on, on the chat is laughing. The problem, we started with um, planting tomato in, in the home. Now we've gone through this. Is the problem is plenty. And you know the funny thing? Hey, can we go and check Mira? Mira, Mira is an uh, Indian American. Yeah, she owns tomato. Yeah, I know her. When everybody was shouting, and eh, tomato crisis is eh, it's because of this influence, I said, this thing has nothing to do with all these things you people are shouting. Yeah, we are at the peak in, uh, of tomato scarcity because you cannot plant tomato and it will germinate properly when we have rains. It's always dry during dry season. Now we do not have enough irrigation to serve that purpose. And our population continues to grow, and we need food. You know, and that is why, see, one uh, basic well, business principle, hey, one hey, basic hey, uh, hey, principle hey, yeah. that will never fail is the principle of supply and demand. Every other thing, you no know, matter how you call yourself, and it, 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 even when you are judging from in Nigeria, where a normal basic business principle do not even apply here, because a lot of factors are are artificially induced or uh, humanly induced. Okay. So the only one that will never fail you is that basic principle. Can you watch in the next three months, price of maize, I'm telling you for a fact, price of maize will drop back. We go back to around 400 to 500,000 uh, per ton. And as I speak with you, it's around 1 million or 800,000, if I'm not mistaken. Why? Because the one we produced last year are not enough. So there is a lot of competition. And even this government contributed to this madness. Because when they wanted to do a uh, one day uh, financing or something, they went to the same market and individual will go to go and mop up all those grains, party and everything, and start distributing it all in the name of palliative. All this we do not have enough. Let me so let me just say this right. Um, Mira, the lady I've seen about tomato juice, was saying that the issue with tomato has nothing to do with bandits. She said that every year tomato is always scarce, and this seems to be said that the problem is now that because of rainy season, and that this has been happening and we haven't solved it. So we are talking, 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 and now you come and give us a clear bomb. You you said the same. You you, I mean. What is going on, guys? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, we spent three hours here, three hours here, and we've come. I was in the space. Carly, sorry, I was yeah. in the space. Yes, by the presidential something uh, on the food inflation. And now, you see, for some time, I've said I'm not discussing. Ask my colleague. I said I'm not discussing anything on the culture because, unfortunately, at the end of our years, they will still call uh, people, uh, uh, I don't know what to call them. To no. one man, I mean, I mean, hold on, I mean, hold on. <laughs> I mean, hold on. I mean, hold on. I think that you are getting very emotional right now. So, I mean, please hold on. Eh? See, the thing is, what I mean is trying to say is that we, we have been here three hours talking. We can talk to you, Thai Kingdom Kong. I will not give you an example. You know, when this new addition started last year, I said, you know what, I am going to be 
managing the, the ladies of agricultural, uh, of agricultural rural development. I, I, I want to, like, on my own, without paying me a time, I want to undo their Twitter account. And what I want to do with that account is to be able to pass the right information because the thing is dumb. Um, Carly, do you know what happened? Nobody reached out to me. I said, I'm going to do it. No cover, no nothing. Whatever information that is germane to the populace, I will be passing it. Make it engaging. Pass the right information. The new, uh, the essay to the minister on new media, she is a um, real estate developer in Abuja. And then she posted something last week, and everybody was like, what are you saying? What is this? You know, how can you ask me from my village in the world should speak? to apply for one bag of fertilizer and come and drop the application in Abuja. If it's, if it's somebody like me, I will be ashamed to put that kind of information. So we cannot continue to complain, complain. But these people will continue to do what they want to do. So, yeah, it's just it's not madness. So, um, so guys, so, uh, so what, what, what I'm hearing now is that this is only the GM issue, whether it's good or safe, it's not even the issue per se. It's not even the problem. This GMO is it will probably still back to the mechanism, which is what you mentioned, Major Farmer, back to the original point of mechanization, irrigation, fertilizer, the not from both. That's what we're talking. That's where we are back now. Is that where we are? We are now. You know, Kalu, the thing there is, since this GMO issue started uh, almost four or five days ago, okay. the Minister of Agriculture, nobody has come out to talk about it. Nobody has come to even clear some of the challenges, some of the concerns. But it's not good and, now. Come and people are saying that I'm being paid. You know, because I'm an extension agent, my job, like, the, my devout to my job is to, you know, educate people. And that's why I say, like, people are saying that you are being paid. No, it just pains me, you know, when I see people who are not getting the right information, and I'll just put it up. This is what but the means of the culture, nobody has come to say, Oh, we want to organize a session. The National Orientation Agency, they are supposed to you know, give people the right information, quells, uh, they quench any concerns or misinformation. Nobody is saying anything. There's this well, guy the, online. The, 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 the guy online that is the essay to the Minister of Agriculture, he's online 24 7 posting quote unquote nonsense. I don't see him posting about agriculture. He can do. What does he do? He's a minister of agriculture. She's a real estate agent in Abuja. I know all of us there, Abuja. She's a real estate agent. So what does she know? You are even talking about the, somebody asking the minister. Even the director of the special advisor on the minister on agriculture. What does he do? But it's not funny, though. It's not funny because, again, let's reset. Let's reset the room. In Nigeria has a food problem, not an inflation problem. If you solve food, you have solved inflation. If you solve inflation, you have solved the Naira. You have solved unemployment. You have solved GDP. The most important ministry in Nigeria is whoever is coordinating the production and distribution of food. There is no big this year. I know economics, and I'm telling you, go on my Twitter feed. I've been quoting it. Four years now, food, import the, import the food, bring it in, let prices go down. What you do later, I don't know. But for now, you are suffering because of lack of food. NPS just posted now, right now, literally right now, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the price of grain in Nigeria went up, of rice, 189%. This is the official 189%. The average price of local rice loose sold at 189% from a year ago. 189. So a farmer has seen the price of rice go up, but we have right, we have the largest rice mills. See the largest rice mills in, in, in Africa, one, two, and three is in Nigeria. So the largest one is in Nigeria, the second largest is in Nigeria, the third largest in Nigeria. Rice mills, the largest in Nigeria. But we have expensive rice. Something is wrong somewhere. I he I saw the Minister of Agriculture, the former Minister of Agriculture, explain how they use the flooding from the when the Karumias released water to Nigeria, how he used that flooding with satellite imagery to start dry season rice from the Nigeria. How he, he explained it like a five-year-old understanding. There was flooding, 
he mapped, he used the sunlight and mapped, and then they planted rice with fertilizer on the floodplains, and then we had dry seed farming, which then meant that there was no farming, quote unquote, in Nigeria, as other folks were suffering from the flooding. That was a minister in the same country. That minister has gone now, he's, in, he's now in the African Development Bank. And who is the new minister? If you can tell me the new minister's name without Googling, a thousand dollars. If you don't know the minister of agriculture without Googling, a thousand dollars. You don't, nobody knows. I can actually tell you, maybe I should. You are a farmer now, you will know. <laughs> but, 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 but unfortunately, we, I said it that how can we handle the most critical aspect of the country economy to a career politician? The worst aspect is that he now surrounded himself with another set of career parade. Ah. Oh, let's end this case. Let's, let's just. Uh, I, I promise, Mr. Mr. Shei Fumi, please go ahead. We'll take, well, the guys that have been waiting here, I'll take them to speak, so to those who have them to speak. And then we'll sort of end this case. I, 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 I'm very, um, I'm not happy. If we want to bash the government, we can do it now because it's a right. We can pull it. There's no point. There's no point. We'll have to go back and ask ourselves good questions. What is going on? One year in, we're having this kind of conversation from GMO to this. It's not right. Uh, Mr. Shei, please go ahead, sir. Shei, for me. Hi, Carlo. I spoke earlier already. I was the one who raised uh, the point about the about the management. Sorry yes. about and that. Yes, and I say I will just be. No, no worries. So Sorry about that. Farmer Lawrence. So, 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 Farmer Lawrence, you've got the floor. I think Farmer, then we'll do Lori, Lori Agrobis. Farmer Lawrence, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Carlo. And um, so much has been said. And I don't want to. I just want to um, say these few points. Um, first, I'll say that whoever controls our food controls our life. Oh. I mean, talking about how Biafra is not um, in existence today. Two, profitability is a bit, and I see that um, most of the pro-GMO speakers have spoken in favor of profitability. Well, in the last four days, I've had to um, do some research and particularly listen to uh, my wife, who is a medical microbiologist, PhD, and asked her questions. What really is this GMO technology at all? And in her words, GMO technology is good, but only if it's in the right of the right person. So it means that if GMO is in the hands of the wrong organization or the wrong set of people, it can be a weapon against the people. Now, if profitability is a bit, be sure that most of the farmers will adopt it. But four years down the line, is there an agenda for the Nigerian people? Is there an agenda for whoever it is that is pushing GMO? Another thing I want to say is that whatever it is that most of the speakers have described about GMO can also be achieved using GMs, which in this case, hybrid seeds. Are you speaking, are you talking about drought resistant um, seeds? Use uh, high yield in um, high yield seeds, pest resistant seeds. You will find them in hybrid seed. Why are we pushing GMOs right now? Now, um, I want to particularly push this to um, some of the pro GMO speakers um, who are actual farmers. Insecurity if you grow GMO on your four on your one acre, your five acres, or five hectares. Will it stop the headsmen from attacking your farm right we've, now? Uh, we've answered that question already. I think we've answered, mm -hmm. we've answered that yeah. question. And then lastly, from my point, um, I, need, I need you to know that apart from um, insecurity, apart from, um, what's it called, from climate change, one of the reasons tomatoes and pepper was, is expensive right now is because at some point earlier this year, there were no hybrid seeds across the nation we couldn't find hybrid seeds to grow right that's hybrid what happens if four years down the line we have adopted gmo and then the seeds and everybody is now dependent on gmo oh, and then they cease to they we know for whatever reason they, 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 they what happens at that time 
So I see your point. I thought that's, that's a good point. Someone, someone has raised this point earlier. Someone has raised this point that if we get money after four years, if yeah. we're all, that was Mr. Nigeria. Mr. Nigeria, what happens yeah. when they say, okay, hey, I will not have money? Exactly. Yeah. So you, you see why Russia is saying that um, GMO is almost equal to terrorism, right? So for me, that's where I start. I mean, instead of giving us GMO, so I say, I tweeted it once, right? I said, solve the problem of insecurity, and Nigeria will mm -hmm. find them. Nigeria will find them. We will sort the other things out. So that's where I stand on it. Thank you. This is eye-opening eye for me. Eye-opening. Uh, let's get Mr. Lori Agro. Let's do Lori Agro, and guys, with your kind permission, we'll sort of close down. Um, if you guys... Uh, uh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kali, uh, for giving me an opportunity to speak. And here yeah, for a very long time, I realized for the first phase for me to see that uh, yeah, very intellectual and uh, people with like minds and uh, people have spoken about their different opinion. Yeah, I'm a farmer and also a business, uh, also grassroots people. I live with the people with the grassroots and knows agriculture. Well, uh, I don't want to make so much noise, but uh, in, the, in the situation of our country, always uh, Nigeria, we want to go for extra cost policies whereby we are looking for extra cost solution, which uh, is not a long solution, whereby agriculture is one of the viable things that we need to advocate and give a priority. But uh, the point of uh, against of GMO, because uh, one of the major factors that affect the farming in Nigeria presently is that if you go back to the state of the Federation in Nigeria, uh, do the Ministry of Agriculture function effectively? What's the their budget for agriculture? Is the department are they functioning? Uh, do those people going and looking the local farmers in the farm are they functioning available? Do, are they doing the, the necessary thing for them to do? For example, here in Kano and Jigawa, uh, if I may tell you categorically, we have a lot of organic seed that people have. Then you can go and find them. They can give you a very ideal and even more than what we call as a food farming or whatsoever it is. But one of the major problems we are facing is that, yes, I am a man of advocating of technology into the agriculture, but the food that we eat and many things, uh, there are needs for this department to go and look at, going to the farmers, asking their problem, finding them the lasting solution, then it can go. But here yeah, now, and together with what Abraham said that in, from the first place that, the insecurity rate is 8% problem of Nigeria. Yes, if you have security and the Ministry of Agriculture are, are, are working effectively and the state agriculture are working effect effectively and the policies are being followed uh, effectively and with patriotism and uh, efficiency in Nigeria, things will go well. But now, if the federal government, at least Ministry of Agriculture, want to give an intervention into the agriculture, does that intervention reach the real farmers? Then to the politicians, somebody that even don't know what is farming will get the high and high and high benefit. We have seen it subsequently uh, during President Muhammad Buhari that they made a lot of programs for people to go and have intervention and the CTV and the Uncle Barawa and the NASA. Who are those benefits? Is it the real farmers? And the politicians come to Kano presently and here and in many other parts of the country. Who are the owners of these big, big companies of rice production? Majority are the people from the government that benefited from the Uncle Barawa or something from the federal government. So we need to go back to the board. Uh, we can take over 20 to 48 hours talking about problems of agriculture solution. The only thing in Nigeria we like patriotism, uh, we like policies and short-cut policies. And short-cut policies can no longer go. We need to go back to the board, especially the federal government and the state government to do the next Thank you very much for having me and giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, I think that is the last word, and we'll call today. We've kept guys here for three hours. I don't want anybody's uh, wife to jump on me. Uh, uh, Ari, we've got the floor. Last, last speaker. Ari, uh, us, Mr. DG Roth. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Carlo, for this opportunity to speak. Uh, yeah, so uh, well, I've worked in uh, civil regulation for the last decade in Nigeria, and uh, I've had an uh, opportunity to see a lot of data, a lot of... Uh, interventions into developing the seed system in Nigeria. And I must say it's quite interesting. Uh, for GMO, it's been in the pipeline since 2016. I tweeted it into a bounty back then. Um, 
GMO, I would say at this point, I think it is a misprint misplaced priority uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, in Nigeria there are more than, I will say there are more than 100 million varieties in circulation uh, that have been developed, that have been marketed, commercialized by seed companies. Uh, these include OPBs, th these include hybrids, and they are doing very well. Uh, there are some OPBs that are doing as high as 5 tons per hectare, there are some hybrids that are doing as high as 12 tons per hectare. The highest yielding hybrid in Nigeria, which is by some foreign companies, is doing about 12 tons per hectare. And I would say those parental materials were brought from Brazil, some from USA, and they had retired these varieties more than 15 years ago in those, in those countries. And yet they are doing so well in Nigeria, and everybody's going after those varieties. I consulted for the company about three years ago, and you know, the seeds are still there. You know, so the kind of thing that they're bringing, the, the argument is that uh, the GMO, the, uh, the FA, you know, drug tolerance, you know, so you can grow them when the, the water content, water uh, rainfall is low, or it helps you to, you know, uh, fight against having one. There are some other varieties, conventional organic varieties that can be promoted that have been released by IAR, IC, a lot of breeders. You know, there is LNCP maize, low nitrogen that, you know, even with low nitrogen, you can still grow them and get reasoning with you, considering the cost of fertilizer in Nigeria. So, promoting GMO at this critical time, you still need uh, a sizable quantity of fertilizer to grow them. That is one. Number two, there are there is there, there is a new army worm resistant variety that is released by Valley Seed and it's been commercialized already. So this ones, you know, have stronger resistance against um, army worm uh, attack. I've seen them on prior fields at multi location trial fields and all. So there are a lot of things into it. So when you look at the intent of those pushing out for this, uh you have to think that what is the genuine interest of, of them in Nigeria food security. And we have to be careful also, whoever controls your seed system or your seed security will have a strong leverage controlling your Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, a lot of things are in it. So we have to look closely at it. There are some other varieties that can be promoted apart from GMOs, and the system allows for it. They are already in conventional circulation. Another thing I will say as I tie up my point is that there is a, a right of farmers to access seed, to have access to same seeds. GMOs, most of them have terminator genes, and the people are questioning about that. So farmers, even the uh, smaller farmers, they wouldn't be able to have access to same seed. When you look at Nigeria demographic, more than 90% of Nigeria are smallholder farmers. They wouldn't have access to safe seed again. No, no we are pro uh, promoting certified seed, but some of these things we edge them out in a way. So there are a lot of things to consider, and we need to just, you know, as a country, speak to ourselves, let the government know that this is what's best for us at this point in time, if we want to really achieve food security. So I think that's just my key point. I have some other points, but because of time, I'll just like to uh, yield it to my first point. So thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You know, normally when we do a space, even if I'm not an expert in that space, I usually have a position maybe I'm for or against, but I try to do the whole thing right. This is an interesting space, you know. I didn't have a for or against, but I was going to learn. And just as I was about to learn, I, I, I was pulled back into reality that Nigeria really has got to fix the problem, the basic problems. It's not an issue of AI. It's like we're trying to do AI when we don't have never. That's really what I'm hearing. We've got to go back and really start from the very, very beginning and say, what is really the problem? If the problem is lack of yield, then we have to mechanize. If the problem is climate change, then do irrigation. If the plan, no, it's a very, very simple solution, but it looks like we have a problem with our kids can't go to school. So we say, oh, let's go and buy Elon Musk's neural chip and put in the kids' brain so that they don't have to go to school. That's what I see happening. We're trying to get to um, too techno technical for a very, very simple issue. I mean, if there's, an, if there's a controversy about something, but it's a solution that has no controversy, then it's an easy fix to just say, go for the solution without controversy. If we already have hybrids that can do most of what we're doing, and GMO has got all this, I'm hearing they can, the, 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 the gene can be shut off and on, blah, blah. It sounds a bit too complex for me. I have 
So we just go to the hybrid and then focus more on the yield, the irrigation, the greenhouse, the fertilizer, do the basics first before we then go into, okay, we want to do GM for something specific. Maybe we have want to plant crops that can drain the mangrove forest or want to plant crops that can, you know, survive something in some desert that can grow trees in a desert to have a green belt. That would be more of a GM for me, but I don't see any... I think if I'm the farmer in Happy, it's cheaper for me, but someone is telling me that it's cheaper for me today, but if that seed gets to my farm, I'll pay you. How about, how do I cost that? So even the cost argument I was making with that come out of the, the window. But I was, you know, again, it's the, what the government, again, has been to communicate. They, they might have a better reason. Maybe the folks out here are all anti-GMO. Maybe there's a good reason why they, they brought GMO. But have they communicated? The guys that own this space, that are in the agricultural space, say they haven't communicated. My own is more of finance. This whole this space I'm open because of the target between food and inflation. But you can see most of the guys on this space, you can say we just let this guy talk and we're even a bit more, more worried, you know. They haven't done a good job to communicate this. And even if they've communicated this, I don't think they have to do a good job in identifying what the problem is. Because most people are inspired to the problem, anything can solve it. But if you're inspired to the problem, then it's very, very simple, you know, what to do. So I'm sure, I, I, I think more work needs to be done. That's how I put it. I, I think you better be careful. If it's not broken, don't try to fix it. Agriculture is not broken, but I think we haven't even tried to fix it in the first place. So maybe we should try to fix it in the first place before we say it's broken and then bring in some new things. So that's my that's my take, guys. So Niger Farmer, um, Ahmed, Benumi, Najib, Harana, Farmer Law, all of you that have come to our space uh, this Sunday, just talk to us and educate us. We are very grateful and we thank you. Niger Farmer, please, I'm going to hold you to bring in that guy that can come and talk to us about how we can set up in a one room in Kecha, a small space or one room in Benue how we can grow tomato or yam, because that conversation we didn't have it in this space, you know, it, we, it got sold up. But what also have an urban farmer space where we can learn as non-farmers how to grow food that we can eat. We eat tomato, we eat yam, not rice, but pepper. How can we start? What we need to do, give us a few tips, boiling milk, putting banana peels in, in the soils. Those sort of things are what we need. So that as urban farmers, we can grow tomatoes and perhaps stretch that budget more and more and more. That's what we want to do. That's what we'll do on this space as well. So please, sir, I'm going to hold you to that screen that guy over to us so we can ask him those questions. For all those listening, I hope you're not discouraged. I think you've heard lots of things today. Go back and ask questions. Go to the local government area. Ask them what they're doing about agriculture maybe they That's just the only way things change can happen. You've got to hold your own folks to account, not the federal, local, state, hold them to account right there. Look at what's happening in Kenya. These are the same kids that are, that are protesting. So go to your local government area and hold them to account. They will stay, don't hold them from that direction. So there's change because we can't continue like this. If rice is going up by 189% in one year, this is an official number 189% rise from Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, then what's the official number? Maybe 300? And how do you survive in this country? It's not possible. So let's do the, let's let's do better. That's what I was. Let's do do better. Again, guys, thank you so much. We are here every weekend, every Sunday, 7 p.m. We are making topical issues on economics, finance, and personal finance. We make it personal to you. We bring in an expert, or we speak among ourselves. And the idea is to learn and to get better. So thanks all for tuning. Hope you guys do tune in next week when we'll be here again. On that note, thank you, sirs. Uh, Niger Farmer, I'm going to give you, uh, to give your, your closing speech because you are the co-host and guest, and then we'll come to this, sir. Niger Farmer? Okay, I'm going to go and if you're speaking, but if you're not, sir, I will end the space on your behalf. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. You guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you all on Monday. Have a good one.